Hello, Internet, and welcome once again. Here we go. It's Thursday, the free-to-play cast brought to you by MMOBomb.com, your home for all things free-to-play related. I'm Mike Byrne, a.k.a. Magic Man, your host for episode 155. It's the last day of September. You're watching it on the first day of October. We've got games. We've got news. We've got Jason Winter. How are you, sir? I am neither games nor news. But you are Jason Winter. But does that mean news can be Jason Winter? It was it was like games comma news comma and Jason Winter. I I employed the Oxford comma there. Actually, funny thing is, if you anagram my name, you can get janitor news, which sounds like a trade journal. So next week we'll have to have some janitor news. We'll we'll get all that. We'll look it up. We'll we'll find something janitorial related. <laughs> top ten. And we'll have we'll have Jason report on I'll it. Say top ten mops. All right, we've got uh, a fair bit of news here, and then we've got a ton of viewer feedback. I would have loved to have gotten everybody's because everybody had replies for the question of the week last week. Uh, so we've got a lot of those. Apologies to the few of you I couldn't get in the show notes here. But let's start with the news and get started here. All right, so first up, obviously the big news this week, right? Wild Stars free-to-play transition finally happened. Happened uh, midnight on the 29th, so it's been free for about two days now, Eastern U.S. time. I played it yesterday. I streamed it for about two and a half hours on MMO Bomb's channel. That's up on YouTube if you want to take a look at it. We did go through an awful lot of all the new things involved with free to play in the stream so if you're interested about it and you don't want to wait for the first look which will come later this week you can check that out and get a feel for some of the omni bits and the currencies and the content and the changes and all of that good stuff but first off jason i have to ask have you jumped in at all yet I have not yet. You have all not. I, all I had to do was look at the cues yesterday, and I was like, you know, I'm going to wait a little while. Yeah, it was a bit rocky uh, at midnight, and it, we anticipated that. We were hoping it wouldn't be the case, since Wildstar has the whole mega server technology, and the game's already been out for for over a year, so they, you know, okay, we're going to get an influx of people. It happened at launch. We're going to get another influx of people. And we've got the mega server, so we don't give you an option. In North America, here's your PvP, here's your PvE. In Europe, here's your PvP, here's your PvE. Everybody's on the same thing. But yeah, queue times were upwards of two hours. I've seen reports of even three and four for some people. Uh, not exactly the way you want to launch on free-to-play. I think people are willing to deal with queues, even on a brand new launch day. Uh, but not two to four hours. I think that's... That's a bit much to ask some some players to wait for. Yeah, I mean, unless you're one of those really super hardcore people, but if you are, then you were probably already playing before. So, which, which probably means it pissed you off that if you were one of those who already had a sub, now you got this to deal with. So, because well, I will say, even for sub players, even sub players had this. Yeah, year. initially, even sub players had those types of cues. Now, when I logged in yesterday afternoon to do the the live stream on our Twitch channel, I had about a 28 minute queue, and I I am considered a, uh, a signature account with the sub and what, everything. What time was that? That was about, I finished streaming at about 5 Eastern. It was about okay. almost three hours long. So I started at about, I guess, 2 Eastern. Yeah, most of the Q stuff I was seeing from the evening, you know, primetime hours. And right. So, on, so that, made, that made more sense. Right. Yeah. So being a signature subscriber, I, was, I had priority queuing. So thank God, because I mean, that would have been ridiculous. Now, they are having some odd technical issues. And if please, you, please detail them. And if you... <laughs> If you watch the beginning of the the live stream on YouTube that I posted today, or yeah, today, um, the first 50 minutes we really don't do much because we're trying. What I was trying to do is create a new character because I had my characters that were like level 30s and 50 and 40s and whatever. Uh, but I wanted to create a new character to take a look at some of the new stuff and the 1 through 15 level changes that they had made and all that good stuff. <laughs> Odd technical glitch right off the bat, we weren't able to create new characters on the PvE servers. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you were a brand new player to the game and absolutely did not want to roll on a PvP server, uh, you couldn't do anything. You didn't have characters to log into and play because you're brand spanking new to the game, and you couldn't create characters. Uh, it would let you create the whole thing, and then when you tried to log in, it would just stall out. You had to control or Alt F for it, or Control Alt Delete and close it. It was 
very bizarre. And well, then it seemed to be a really important thing to have. Yeah, to right. <laughs> be able to create characters. Yeah, and they said that, you know that, oh it's a known issue, and it's like well, okay well yeah, but it's like a, should be the <laughs> number one, yeah. one known issue right now, and get that fixed. And an odd little thing to occur out of nowhere. It's it's not like they previously had issues creating characters, but uh, in the in the update. Uh, the, the reloaded update it did something they so yeah that was fun so we rolled on a PvP server to uh, to do our our streaming and then we had odd things like I went into one of the new things they have is instead of just dropping you into the arc ship and you do the arc ship as like the tutorial stuff and then it throws you into the world they actually give you the option uh, you can ju if you're a veteran to wild star you can just click here and immediately just jump down into the game and go. If you're familiar with MMOs but not Wildstar, go to the Ark ship and do the basic kind of tutorial there. If you're totally new to MMOs, and this is something brand new to Wildstar, you'd never played an MMO, do this tutorial first, and it really goes into the basics. WASD movement, you know, using one as your abilities and stuff like that. Yeah, I wish a lot of more games had that, because I, I always get annoyed with that when it's like the first thing, you just keep popping up the stuff. You know, press W to move forward, press right. 1 to use your abilities. Yeah, so it's nifty. It was nifty, uh, but the, the very, very bare-bones basic thing was two to three minutes. I mean, it was... It, it just taught you WASD, spacebar to jump, and go kill ten of these things that are right next to you by hitting the number one a couple of times. Well, that's everything you need to know about MMOs. Right, right. right. <laughs> kill ten things right next and to And then you. I couldn't get out of it. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me, I hit the ring to, to go out of it, and then it takes you into the next, the arc ship portion, uh, and it said instance is full, screen went white, game locked up again. Uh, it doesn't give you... Character. So, you know. it does, yeah, it doesn't even give you any indication of what's going on. So there's oddball technical issues going on with it. It's one of those things that if you really want to check it out, I'd say wait a week. Uh, these are these are the type of problems that, yeah, they're unfortunate and they're kind of mysterious in some regards, but they're going to be worked out very quickly, and they're not they're game breaking in the fact that it makes it impossible to play, but they will be gone very quickly. So if if you want to check it out, wait a week, and, and then you won't have to worry about any of that stuff. It's no big deal. Um, on the free to play side, have have you watched anything and seen like the cash shop? And what were your thoughts on how they actually implemented the biggest portion of this, which was the free to play component? Yeah, so I just haven't had the time to look that sort of all of that over. I figure I'll wait for the other people to give me their uh, opinions on people who are more knowledgeable about the game and what what it takes, you know, what what you want to have free and what you don't want to, and so on. And I haven't seen any like major nerd rage going on on the internet, so apparently it's not too egregious in any way yeah the loyalty program's cool I mean, it works very similar to riffs you the more money you sink into it the more loyalty you get the more bonuses you get i'm all i'm already uh in tier six which is the max tier because um, you bought I, 34 copies <laughs> right i don't have it completed yet but i i'm already in tier you, six so completed. you bought 34 copies. i logged in and i had a ton of rewards and mounts and things like that already uh, so basically, the free-to-play portion I think is really well done, actually, and, and it doesn't surprise me that it is, because in the West here, NCSoft has a pretty good free-to-play model for their other products, mm -hmm. like Ion and things like that. So it didn't surprise me, and it, they really took the Rift approach with it, and I don't think I'm alone in thinking Rift has a pretty damn good free-to-play model too. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, everything in their shop uh, can be bought with Omnibits. And Omnibits are available in-game. Uh, I will tell you that just playing from level 1 to maybe 6 on the stream, we had already accrued about 30 Omnibits. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and that's in the starter zone at level 1 through 6. We had already accrued 30. And you get them from world drops and everything. Oh, they'll always throw a lot more at you early on, probably. <laughs> and I'm fine with that. Yeah. You know, don't hold a back on and force me to go through the crap that Wildstar usually does. Force me to go through the crap to get to the good stuff. Um, so if you don't want to spend cash, that's an option for you. There's only one item in the account. Even the account services, um, like extra slots and bag spaces and wardrobe slots, even those are available for Omnibits. There's only one item that isn't available for Omnibits in the entire cash shop. And it's the mystery tokens, uh, and they're used in like this kind of potluck, you know, buy a token, throw it in here, get a chance at some loot, 
Oh, right. so, so lockboxes. Right. It's a lockbox okay. without being a damn box. Uh, <laughs> but it makes sense why that wouldn't be available for Omnibits, because it's a freaking sure. lockbox thing. Yeah, yeah. Ironically, in the one that I opened on the stream, I got Omnibits. So... <laughs> So I really can't complain. I think they did a nice job on this overall. Uh, there's enough there that you, all the content's open. You don't have to worry about that. If you want some quality of life stuff, you can shell out some Endcoin for it right away. You have the option of buying cred uh, off of somebody in-game for plat and then getting loyalty points through using the cred and thus getting the signature membership without having to spend real money. There's just, it's any way you want to play it, you have the option. So I actually really, really like the free-to-play model they put in place. Sounds pretty good. Now the question is, will the will the honeymoon stay longer this time than it did last time? Because like, I know we've heard a lot about all the different other gameplay changes they made and so on. So that's going to that's gonna be the real test is whether it, it still appeals to that kind of player it was kind of going for in the first place. Yeah, and um, I haven't played any of my higher level characters yet because there are itemization changes and crafting changes and stat changes and amp changes and all that that came with the free to play. And I haven't jumped on my higher level character to check that stuff out yet because itemization was a huge issue uh, in Wildstar for a long time. Uh, on the lower level character, I had I had my fun, you know, doing everything. I did notice that the experience gains were faster from uh, from what I had leveled, and they've done one through fifteen a, a revamping of not not only the quest flow and the experience gains, but even in some cases, just the environment has been redone uh, to facilitate faster movement around the entire world. All the rocket ship stuff that you had written up, uh, that's all in there. I opened up my map and had like. 15, 20 different points I could go to automatically. Uh, even being a level 1 character, I didn't have the money to do it, but I, I could have <clears throat> the in-game money to do it. So all that's there. It does feel a bit more streamlined, and I know that they've done 1 through 15, and then they're going to work their way up the ladder from there as far as fine-tuning and redoing some of that leveling experience. And it gives me hope. It really does. I, I enjoy Wildstar. It's not my main MMO, but it is one of my couple of fallbacks. Uh, I enjoy it. Uh, I do like, and you may like this too, uh, they instantly... It's about the inventory? Uh, no, I know you like the inventory changes uh, and the sell junk button. I don't even, I don't even know what. Oh yeah, other than that, I, yeah, that's right. There was that little article a couple weeks ago, wasn't there? They did implement um, mouse camera, uh, so instead of you know holding down the right mouse button to rotate your camera, they implemented a Terra style camera. See, I don't like that. I prefer the I prefer holding down right mouse. That's which you I can do. Just doing so many things. Which, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is the default, in fact. But you're trying to appeal to me with this, and you're just off, man. I, I thought you would like it, because it does give it a bit more of an action feel. Now, uh, Wildstar has kind yeah, of yeah, treaded yeah, the line. Terror, how much I love that. <laughs> well, I know you like the action combat, though. I'm not saying you like Terra, uh, but you're, you're kind of sick of the whole tab targeting thing. Um, it does give it more of an action-y feel, and Wildstar's kind of always treaded the line between tab target and a little more action-y, but this kind of throws it over into the whole Terra realm, including shifting your abilities to your left and mouse buttons when you do that type of camera option. And you even have options to set it uh, to be that type of camera only in combat, uh, or you can make it when in combat, when in moving, and when idle. Okay. And then it's totally that camera. I opted for when moving and when in combat, simply because when you're idle, if you stop, it will revert back to a mouse, and you don't have to open windows to get your mouse to come up so you can close other things that, you know, oh, you leveled up, pop, you get the pop up. Sure. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of good changes. If you really haven't checked out Wildstar, I can't really think of a reason to tell you not to, unless you just now, don't like their yeah. combat. Uh, and it's kind of been my mainstay view on Wildstar for a long time. Unless you're just dead set against their combat, um, the, there's really no reason not to try it now that it's gone free to play. When it was sub-based, I can understand. But uh, all in all, pretty impressive. I hope it holds up. I hope they they continue down the path that they're on. Um, and it, kudos to them. It was it wasn't a terrible launch. They had issues, but uh, not too bad. Not too bad. Not, and in a wider note, you know, looking at, if this does well, and then you look at what Final Fantasy XIV did, it's almost like, is there, is there, is it, could any MMO that fails out of the gate just say, all right, we're completely redoing everything, going to relaunch, and maybe it'll work? 
Is that that's the kind of optimism now that people are going to maybe go for? Maybe maybe more games will try that sort of thing. I don't know. I, I think the problem that you have there is that these two things were so big budget. It was like we have to try everything. You know, Final sure. Fantasy fourteen, obviously, besides IP damaging and Square wanting to fix that, the financial investment was stellar. And the same thing with WildStar. I think that is the the primary motivator. We're going to talk about you know Warhammer forty k Dark Nexus Arena in a little bit. If if you have games like that that come out and if they were subscription sure. based, let's say, uh, for some odd reason, and they fail, no, I don't think you're going to have this desire of we can redo it, we can build it. It's scrap it, move on to the next project. Uh, it does create a little bit of optimism for those bigger scale projects, though I think. But but for the most part, as a, as an industry, no, I don't think it does so much. EverQuest, but if EverQuest Next fails, then this is what they'll do. Probably. I don't think you're even going to see EverQuest Next. So. Oh, <laughs> And some of the viewers are starting to agree with me. All right, let's go on, since that was mostly me talking. Jason, you're going to take this one. All right. Speaking of making changes and redoing things, we see that with uh, games that are just rehashing old content, too. Not models and everything, but content. World of Warcraft does it. Every game does it at some point. Star Trek's doing, Star Trek Online is doing something a little bit different, though. Uh, tell me about it. What's going on? Well, they're going to introduce something called the Admiralty System, which is, at its most basic, it's kind of like the crew mission system where you'd send little crew members out to do things, which is sort of like your typical like garrisons in WoW or like the uh, Pantheon and Skyforge, you know, that sort of thing. We have these little people, and they go out and do things, come back a few hours later, get you some rewards. Uh, the, for, as far as I can tell, Star Trek Online was the first MMO to actually do this back like three or four years ago. So, uh, But they're going to do the same kind of thing with ships. Uh, the notion being that you're sending out, you're an admiral now, so you're sending out the, the fleet to, you know, perform missions and so on. Some of them are going to take longer, some are going to take, like, you know, up to a day to do. But what they do is they, they're not just individual random stuff. They kind of have their own theme and their own, what do they call, campaigns. Uh, so the progression of the admiralty system is divided into multiple groups of assignments, each with their own set of rewards and themes. Each of these headings is referred to as a campaign. Within a, campaign, within a campaign, players will progress through 10 tiers, each time improving the rewards earned within that campaign, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And when you finish a campaign, yeah, reaching tier 10 of the campaign grants players a unique epic quality admiralty ship thematically related to the campaign in question. So you can use your old ships, or if you... I, I don't quite know if, if it counts any ship you ever had or if it's just ones that you acquire after this, but you can get rid of old ships that you don't want, and still use them in your admiralty system. So you won't have to keep an inventory full of 100 ships you know, lined up ready to go on your stuff. Uh, so there's that, which inventory management, which is awesome. Totally awesome. Uh, but yeah, the fact that they are trying to add a little bit more story to it, add a little bit more detail, and give you give you more of a reason. That, and it feels like something more interesting than just, you know, again, send random guys out to do something, they come back, send them out at it again, whatever. So they're they're trying to do this. Now, these things are repeatable. The campaigns are so. You can do them over and over, but I believe each campaign mission. Uh, let's see. I don't know if it was a campaign mission or something else. It said that it takes like 20 hours. So basically, you do it wow. once per day. Yeah, you do it once per day, so it'll take you some time to churn through it. And, you know, again, it's click a few buttons, and then, you know, a day later, you get loot. So it's not like it requires any special, uh, uh, special attention. And it's just something you can do with all those extra ships you've had, because you go through a few, you, you go through like one every 10 levels basically, and then I think more once you get to higher levels. So something to do with all that extra stuff that you've been accumulating all this time. And uh, which is a, a nice little way to expand upon a system they currently had to give you some use to the stuff you weren't using otherwise. Enough to get you to jump in with your lifetime sub? You know, I keep wanting to jump in, even because, even for other things. I always think Star Trek Online is a little underrated. Now, again, I wish I had a better handle on how the free-to-play aspect of it worked, but, you know, again, like I said, Lifetime Sub, they tossed me, whatever. <laughs> played it for, like, a month, was like, eh. Actually, I got the original game originally, played that for a month, didn't care for it, came back when I went free-to-play two years later, then played around with it for a month or two, thought, hey, this is actually kind of good, because they really do, I think, a good job with their storylines. If you're a Star Trek fan, you can get in, you'll recognize a lot of stuff, even though it's set, like, 20 years after Next Generation. A lot of interesting stuff. I did a time travel thing. Where I went and got got to talk with Scotty, so that was awesome. <laughs> totally geeking out at, at doing engineering work alongside Scotty. Uh, but yeah, it was it, it's pretty fun, and they, they do a lot of interesting things in there. All right. I don't I don't have very much experience with Star Trek Online at all. I did uh, first look for it 
years and years ago. Well, yeah, brought one more free to play, probably. Yeah, right around then. And then uh, I think I got into it maybe once or twice for a stream, just roll a new character and go screw around. So I never really, really, really got into it. But I do kind of like this idea of... Yeah, technically we're rehashing new content or old content, but we're doing something a little different with it. Mm -hmm. It's not just okay going back to the same zones and doing uh, a slightly tweaked version of what was already there. I kind of dig this. I, I wish more MMOs would do this. Not to the extent of Cataclysm, though. Not <laughs> to the extent of let's rehash the old zones by destroying the world and shaking it all up. I Never mind. And this is just one part of their update of yeah. that's going to be coming out with all the crazy stuff they're going to be doing. So. Yep. It's heating up storyline, too. I have been keeping track of the storyline in the episodes. Heating up there. See, I try to ignore them as much as I can in case I ever want to go back and play it again and experience all the stuff. So. Yeah, it would take me so long to get there that I just I just watch the story stuff. <laughs> Cheater. I know. I know. Uh, what else did we... We had a first look go up a few days ago uh, for Warhammer 40k Dark Nexus Arena. This is a new MOBA by White Box Interactive, currently in alpha, uh, obviously using the Games Workshop Warhammer 40k IP. Did you get a chance to take out the check, check out the first look? I got through about half of it, and then I was like, man. Yeah, that's kind of that's that's the way I felt playing it. Um, the weird thing is, like, I, I imagine we've talked about this before, but man, I just completely didn't know this existed. <laughs> yeah, like, it, is it's, it's, it is under the radar. It is a bit under the radar. It's a combination of MOBA, and this is like the third Warhammer-related game I've heard about in the last week or been kind of interested in. So it's like, they're, yeah. they're, just, they're just throwing it out everywhere and seeing what sticks, I guess. It, 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 is, a bit, uh, it is a bit odd. Um, and, and somebody had said that this was the first Warhammer MOBA. That's not technically true. Uh, anyway, sort of, yeah, they sort of had that one thing. I they had the like, Warhammer Online uh, Wrath of Heroes, which, that's it, yeah, which, I played, I played which didn't last actually. long. Yeah. And I know that that was more deathmatchy than MOBA y in some regards. But to, to be honest, so is this. Uh, however, there are a few cool things going on here that I do like. One, they are trying to mix up the MOBA formula at least a little bit. Uh, instead of 5v5, it's 4v4. It's a small change, but it is it is uh, an impactful change when you think about we're only dealing with two lanes instead of three. Uh, so it does force the action a little bit tighter, even though there's less overall players on the map. Um, I did like the idea of everything is an aimed attack, you know. If and you do have a, a spacebar ability to kind of dash or dodge out of the way, and so it is a little more twitch slash uh, skill based then, you know, throw down whatever, and, and it's going to auto-hit like it does in some uh, were MOBAs. Your, were your auto-attacks aimed as well? Everything is aimed. Oh, even, okay. Yeah, even, I mean, I'm doing heals. If you watch the first look, I... It's all the heals, yeah. Yeah, I mean, even the basic tether, which is how all the healing starts, is an aimed attack. If, if you're teammates run away while you're in the middle of trying to tether <laughs> That's them. That's chasing that one guy down. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> just stop. You have a quarter of health, and there's a healer standing right behind you. Stay still. Uh, uh, also, it's not uh, race to the end and destroy a nexus or a crystal or whatever. It's a points-based deathmatch a la, like, a first-person shooter. So going into the jungle and defeating those mobs in there has benefits to you. It earns you victory points. Uh, taking out towers gives you victory points. Taking out opponents gives you victory points. Executing those opponents when they're on the ground yields extra victory points. Mm -hmm. So there's an incentive to execute your own players when they're downed. Uh, not because it's going to give you any points, but because it takes away the opportunity for extra points on the other side. Uh, and uh, if you watch the first look, the match started as a blowout and then got really close at the end. So I did like that, even though on the score initially you're like, oh shit, we're out of this. Turned out we weren't if we just kept playing. Uh, it does have its flaws, though. Uh, one is it's in the MOBA market, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be a flaw for this, because as, as strong as the Warhammer IP is... I don't know if it's going to be strong enough within Warhammer players that are also MOBA players uh, that are going to jump into this. So they've kind of cut their demographic a little bit there. Uh, and it really, really does need some polish. I say that knowing that the game is in alpha. 
Uh, but there are frame rate issues. There are uh, graphical issues. There is a lower uh, feeling of quality in the graphics and the game's performance and optimization. And I say that just so that I don't get blasted in the YouTube comments for not saying it. I'm not holding it against the game yet uh, because it is in alpha. And the only way in is a founder's pack or an invite from the website. So I'm going to pretend for a minute that the graphics and the optimization and the performance and everything are at some point going to be mediocre. We'll just say they'll be on par with today. Okay? If I set all of that performance stuff at a mediocre standard, I did have some fun in this game. I don't know how long I'd play it, but I did have some fun in here, and that's really rare for me in a MOBA. Uh, I'm going to put it at about a 6 to a 7. So a, an average title for me. If, and, and in my mind, I kind of put League at like a 9, an 8 or 8.5, eight a, a 9. I kind of put Smite in that 8 to 9 range as well. So this is a couple points off the mark, uh, but not far. It is fun. It's going to have a smaller audience, so queue times might be a bit uh, of a pain in the butt. And I really, really need to see the way their cash shop uh, ends up going out because it looked like there were items in there that did impact stats uh, okay. that were only available with Tribute, which was the cash shop currency. So that's, internet, don't blast me too badly. That's a six to a seven with a lot of assumptions being made, <laughs> okay, on the game's performance and its final cash shop. Um, that's pretty much a six or a seven on fun factor. I had an average amount of fun. I guess that's a good way to do that review, right? That's a good sure. way to end that one. Sure, sure. You didn't care for it from look one? <laughs> I mean, well, it's just like, like I said, you know, it's another MOBA. And even if it was a really good one, even if it did pretty well, is there, I mean, is there any chance that it gains traction of, of any reasonable amount? I don't think so. No, Sadly, I, I, can't I don't think it does. And Games but... Workshop licenses aren't licenses are not cheap. No. So. No. I don't know. I don't know what they're. I mean, I really, I really wish them luck because I think they have some neat ideas. Which the other MOBAs will then grab after this one goes in. The right. <laughs> Right. But yeah, I, I think they've kind of hamstrung themselves with a smaller audience. And this has been in development for a long time. Like they sent me a long time ago. I'm going to show it on camera. You won't be able to see it. But uh, they, they sent me this little like little little Warhammer figure and a little box that he came in and uh, an alpha code. And that was a long time ago. And we weren't really allowed to do anything with the footage. And then just late last week, like Thursday, they said, hey, if you want to do a first look, go ahead. Uh, we say okay, fine. We'll we'll go do one. Um, so it's been in development for a while. Still in alpha though, so it means that they're taking their time. I just don't know how much time they can take. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last up today, we've been pretty pretty nice about the topics today. Wildstar got a <laughs> thumbs up from from me. Star Wars got a thumbs up from you. Star Trek. Uh, so, I'm sorry, Star Trek. Uh, Warhammer 40K got kind of a, a little bit of a thumbs up, assuming a lot of things uh, <laughs> in the future of development. Um, but it wouldn't all be good news. Uh, so uh. Let's talk for just a minute about Romero's Aftermath, uh, a zombie survival horror game. Uh, a little more on the K arcade side than the simulation side, if you're thinking things like H1Z1, DayZ, stuff like that. Uh, a little more arcade than that. There's a lot more loots to be found. There's a lot more in-depth crafting system. This is... Uh, uh, this one's really hard for me, all right? So they emailed saying, hey, would you like to do a preview of this game? And I said, sure. I had never heard of it. Now, it, it totally flew past my radar. Never heard of it. Um... So I said, yeah, we'll, we'll schedule a preview. And so I got on and was talking to the, the devs or the lead designer and um, uh, Alex, uh, uh, Alex Skidmore. And we're, we're going through the game, and I'm like, okay, you know, it looks a little, little dated as far as the graphics go, but it's not bad. It does its job, and the UI is kind of messy, but, you know, it's still in beta, so whatever. And they do have some, like, le neat ideas where you can... Uh, liberate cities and they'll be zombie free for a period of time and then airdrops will come in and give people better loot as long as the city's liberated they do have like a kind of a housing thing where you know in landmark when the way you placed your plot mm. right on the on the ground and that was your spot you can do that in aftermath uh, mm. provided you're not too close to somebody else's plot or too close to a city 
and then you can build all kinds of things in there and store your your goodies. Here's the thing, though. At the end of the day, I just can't recommend it, Jason. Why uh, is that? Mike? It's in beta, and so maybe things will change. I don't hold out a lot of hope for things changing. The cash shop didn't look too bad. It was all cosmetic stuff, and the designer was saying you know most of that stuff can be found in game or even traded to somebody else in game and in, in the in game economy anyway. Uh, here's the problem, though. Um, <laughs> We started the presentation with them telling me that this is being created by a team of people that left the War Z slash infestation stories uh, because they were unhappy with that product. Uh, and there were things they wanted to do and they were just it wasn't they weren't listened to, so they departed and started making their own product. Which I thought, okay, you know, that's respectable. I don't like sure. what, what my job is doing, what whatever field it is, I'm gonna go do something else. You see that sort of thing all the time. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. So I'm writing my review piece and what I think of it and a little preview article and whatnot, and I start uh, digging into some stuff because I see a name showing up pretty often that I don't like, uh, and it's Sergei Titov. And I've never met the guy. I don't know him personally. I am not vouching for his personal character or saying that I don't like him personally. I don't know him from Adam. Couldn't tell you who he was. Could pick him out of a lineup, but just that's because I've seen his picture in interviews. I don't like the way he runs a business, though, or the way he handles a community and or the press. And I'm not going to rehash the whole War Z infest infestation stories fiasco here. It doesn't need to be rehashed here. I reached out after I was in the middle of writing this, the, af the aftermath piece, and I said, is Sergei Titov uh, involved in this project at all? Thinking that one of the things they had to have been unhappy with was the way that it was publicly handled, and so, no, he wouldn't be involved, right? Yeah. That, that would be like, why did you leave? Sergey? you know? <laughs> that would be one of the things. Not true. Sergey is involved in it. Uh, he handles the publishing. He does reply to things on the forums. I didn't like that it wasn't, like, it was kept... It just felt a little sneaky to me, uh, and so I can't recommend it. Sorry. Uh, as much as there may be cool ideas here and it may get some polish over the time, I cannot recommend Aftermath. It's one of those things where I'm going to vote with my wallet and anything that has Sergey's name on it, I just I can't touch. I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, that's a guy who's had now two horrible games, if you can recall. If anybody remembers Big Rigs Big over Rigs. the race. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was his baby, too, which was probably the worst done game ever. Just I I don't I mean that with no exaggeration either. I'm not like the World of Warcraft the worst game ever. No, this really was horrible. <laughs> so look that up sometime if you have a chance. And of course what happened with the War Z and you know that by which War Z was made by the company was called Hammerpoint Interactive. That was what Sergey's company was there. So now it's like you say they got this new company, completely new yep. company. We broke off because we were upset, but we've got the same guy in charge. So really? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so that's your one bad news for the day, Internet. Uh, the rest of it was good news. Thumbs up. Let's go and do the weekly bombs. Jason, you're up, sir, since I have been feel like I've been talking forever. Oh, yeah, pretty much. I'm just sitting here. Oh, hey, it's my turn. Okay. All right. Got to do it. Got to give it the bomb to Romania. Good job, Romania, our favorite country. All our fans are from there. You know, here are some, here are some facts about Romania. They have the oldest Homo sapiens, oldest Homo sapiens remains found in Europe from 40,000 years old. So that, that, those were discovered there. They were number they, uh, at the 2012 Math Olympiad. They came in best out of all countries in Europe, 10th in the world. So good, smart, smart people there. And, of course, they gave us Dracula because he's from – Transylvania was a part of Romania back then. So. Valachia. Vlad, Vlad Tepes is actually from – Romania. So. The Prince of Wallachia. Um, good yeah, one. good. I, I need like a Romanian flag. Now. I should have. I should have made one of those up to have one little to wave it around. Yeah, something. I mean, you're like steps away from applying I mean... for dual citizenship. <laughs> 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 All right, so a dub bomb to Romania. Um, if you want your country next on the list, then you got to represent in the comments. Send money. <laughs> I'm going to give a dub bomb, too. It's all good news this week. Uh, to Hex Entertainment. They're the makers of uh, Hex Shards of Fate, the online trading card game free-to-play. Them and Wizards of the Coast finally came to terms with the lawsuit filed last year where Wizards of the Coast uh, was alleging willful infringement on intellectual property. The terms are undisclosed, of course, but they came to some type of license-slash-agreement 
and Hex Shards of Fate and Hex Entertainment uh, are free to go and continue development for what I think is actually a really, really good trading card game online right now. So, all good news. Uh, from the viewers, Noble Nerd says, Daybreak is being controlled by an investment company. This was us talking about EverQuest and being confused with a lot of the Daybreak decisions lately. They're being pressured to make money. If it cannot make a profit, the investment company will sell off all the parts of the company that can recover their investment. I haven't trusted the new company since this happened, and everything since has not changed my stance. It will not surprise me if by 2016 we hear a notice that the IPs are being sold and the company is being dissolved. I want to ask you something about this, Jason. When, when they, they first were, were purchased by Columbus Nova, we talked on the show about how the immediate response is going to be, oh, investment firm, they're going to do the blah, 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 right? And we kind of said, yeah, guys, just chill, wait, you know, see what's going on. Now that we look back at it a month, you know, a few months later, I kind of got to say, I can see where Noble Nerd's coming from. You do kind of have that feel of somebody, and we don't even know who, you know, we don't even know if it's Columbus Nova, we just assume it probably is, pulling strings behind the scenes to alter uh, profit stuff. And if it doesn't work out, pfft, or the people that are there aren't going to work out, pfft, get rid of them. Because that would have been completely different if Sony was in charge. They wouldn't care if, if SOE made any money. They could just keep blowing money away, and Smedley could lose like millions of dollars every year, and he would have kept his job, right? No, I'm not advocating. Well, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not complaining. Exactly advocating because because now it's an investment company. Now they want to make money. And no, 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 no. You're misunderstanding. Look, I'm not saying that they're not entitled to make money, and of course that that's the whole point. That's why they bought the company. They think they can make money, right. and that's fine. But you're putting another company, in this case Daybreak Game, in a position where now whenever they say anything, because things have been advertised as A, then launched as B, then advertised as C, and there's all this back and forth, you have no consumer confidence. You're forcing yourself into a position where you have to sell off these IPs. And if you end up doing that, then what the hell was the, the point of buying the damn company? I'm all right if they if they want to just buy the company and sell off all the IPs. That's their objective. They think they can turn a profit individually selling off the IPs. Go for it. I don't have a problem with them buying Sony Online Entertainment, rebranding it Day Daybreak, selling off the individual IPs, and seeing if they can turn a profit that way. That's fine. But in the interim, it's forcing the individual games to cause all this different community cluster shit. Uh, where you don't know if what you're being told, are they going to be expansions, are they going to be campaigns, are you not making development, are you not doing this anymore, to the point where the IPs become essentially worthless. The thing it's, is, just, it's just odd behavior to me. I am not which, shunning which, so, them for doing it. It just seems odd and counterintuitive to trying to make a profit long term. They were probably heading in the wrong direction last year, and that's, a, that's part of why Sony sold them. If they were making millions and millions of dollars and being incredibly successful... Sony might not have sold them. Maybe Sony was oh, there. Oh, I got to oh, disagree. We want to cut our losses. We want to sell them off. No. Still kind of going downhill. No. You know, Sony like has been having troubles for a long time now. And this last entire year to two years has seen Sony sell off a number of assets simply to make balance sheets look good. So I don't think it was as, okay, this thing isn't making us any money. Let's see if we can sell it. It was, here's a viable asset we have, regardless of how prop profitable or not profitable oh, it may yeah, have been. Exactly. And, and, we don't, and we don't want it anymore. Hey. We're not interested in doing it anymore. So sell it off and make the balance sheet at the end of the quarter look good. Sure. But they wouldn't have done that if it was something that was really profitable. So mm, I disagree because I think this is an easy aspect of your business to sell off. If you're if you honestly don't want to be involved in this type of stuff going forward, which Sony doesn't and well, had would have for really a while. been involved, wanted to be involved in it if EverQuest was like EverQuest, you know, 2001. But it wasn't making as much money now. So. All right, fair enough. All right, go ahead, take the next one. All right, this comes from exclusive elusive X Treasure. So I'm going to give a dub bomb to Arcage. Wow, really? Okay. Give a dub bomb to Arcage for its server downtime due to the patch mergers. Yeah, you read that correctly. <laughs> and I didn't read ahead. You read that correctly. A dub bomb, not an A bomb. Why? Because what you failed to mention was the seven days of patron time, the labor potions, the costume, the boat, the temp buff items. Oh, yes, and full labor we were compensated with. I'm tired of everyone acting like Arcage is the plague. Is it perfect? No. Is it unique and fun? Yes. 
I get that it has had issues, many of them customer service related, but you don't go into a grocery store, buy a two liter, and because the clerk was rude, bash the two liter. And as for the server downtime, name one game that is not at one point had another, another, at one point or another has had an issue with a patch. I played a damn lot of MMOs and I can't. You want to be pissed to try on? Fine. But the game itself has a lot of interesting features, including intricate crafting system, great class customization, fun dungeons, PvP with a purpose, land ownership, though I did not own land myself, dynamic events, etc. I'm not just saying I like the game because it's pretty. I've been there since Alpha. Arcade is not a bad game. I am not a bad person for liking the game. That's all I'm saying. You tell them, Elusive X Treasure. You, you tell all the haters. I think she's talking to us. Well, maybe. Yeah, I am a hater. I'm, I'm probably a little harder than our, on everyone else than we, I should be. We post, if I post an arcade article on set, I know we're guaranteed at least 20 comments if the game sucks. So. My my personal anger is more a try on. I, I can agree to that. You want to be her comment is you want to be pissed to try on fine, and that is ninety nine point nine nine percent of my my angst is at try on for their mistakes with, with that happen to be with Arcage. But I do have to say in response to one point, server downtime. Name one game that has not at one point or another had an issue with a patch. You're absolutely right. It just seems to me that RKH has an issue with every patch of some type, and that that's a little meh for me. But yeah, you're probably right. I'm probably a little harder on RKH. So I go, and no, you're on? certainly not a bad person. If I've ever I'm implied if implied somebody was bad for liking a game, then God, I'm sorry. That certainly yeah, not. What I, I prefer meant. to think of the grocery store, you know, comment as being you, you buy a two liter and they only give you one liter of soda. That's kind of you know, like a <laughs> discount, but whatever. Black Star says, "A bomb to my laptop dying mid raid." Mid raid on Final Fantasy XIV. Hmm. That sucks on any game. All right, Joshua Knight says the bomb to Swotor. Jump back into the game, quickly activate the subscription, and have been enjoying the universe again. No other MMO provides such an excellent immersive storyline, with the exception of Final Fantasy XIV Heaven's Ward, which is the first MMO to bring me to tears in the cutscenes. Plus, running around with lightsabers is just plain epic. Been reading extended universe books and super pumped for Star Wars Seven. His name is Knight, Joshua Knight. She's like a Jedi Knight. Yep. Like, what is his name? Jane Notice I that Joshua said quickly activated subscription because that's what anybody that wants to play SWOTOR for any length of time in their right minds will do. Yep. You have to, I do it. You have to activate your subscription. This is a shout out to uh, Tina and to Larry Everett at Massively oh. Opinionated that SWOTOR's, this is an example of SWOTOR's free to play model not being better than Rift. Question of the week. Last week, let's let some venom out. It's speaking, bad. Of, speaking of hate. It's yeah. bad to keep it in. I'm not bitter. Uh, what free-to-play game would you shut down right now if you could and why? Japan's Freak says, I will kill with fire aura kingdoms. I played for two years and could not get a half-decent idol on. I even tried buying it. Wow. All right, Neo Bari's got the long one. I get all the long ones this week. Oh, they're all long on this topic, baby. Oh, man, it's more area, too. Great. Okay, there's one MMO that needs to be nuked from orbit. It's Scarlet Blade from Area Games. <laughs> How is this travesty of a game still online isn't a mystery, and here's why. Oh, boobs. I was waiting for an event at one of the major gaming conventions at Gen Con. While in line, one of the security guys struck up a conversation with me. He appeared to be in his 60s and didn't have many teeth. So he asked me if I played any of these MMOs, of which I said yes. He asked me whether I had played Scarlet Blade, of which I also said I had. He then became animated and excited that someone else had played the game. He talked about how we really enjoyed looking at all those boobs bouncing around. Having to ask the obvious question, I then proceeded to ask if he had ever purchased the nudity bits. I didn't know that was in the game. Yep. He came over and whispered, of course I did. Having met someone who actually puts money into that game, please save the rest of humanity and that poor guy's money and shut Scarlet Blade down. Can't say I disagree. The last time I talked about this game on this show... Uh, I took a beating on some forums, so I'm just going to leave it alone. Uh, the Enigma, question of the week. I would shut down EVE Online. Ooh. Just to see the chaos that would cause, and some just want to watch the world burn. Or in this case, the galaxy burn. Serious answer, though, would be World of Warcraft. 
While I bet many may enjoy it still, I feel Blizzard is just trying to come up with something, anything, to keep that game going. The expansions have been dipping in quality since Lich King. Their seemingly refusal to go free-to-play, which many people, including me, would adore. Uh, and to see what a new Blizzard MMO would be like instead of constantly updating a limited 10-year-old one. Nobody wants to give up an account. They put years and potentially hundreds of dollars worth of investment. But I think it's time that we finally put an end to the world of Warcraft. Yep, I want to see it shut down just so ever, all those players go into the games I play. And more people on my Guild games. Wars 2, you mean? Oh, well, whatever else. Or Lotro. Send all them to Lotro. <laughs> and then won't Warner Brothers have a difficult decision to make in about 12 months? <laughs> okay. Alright, Frelm says, question of the week, I would shut down Skyforge. Wow, I've given it like two months chance. Wow. Get that thing back to the drawing board so that it can be reborn, much like the likes of Final Fantasy XIV. Reborn as a great game. It has the base for a great instance dungeon runner title and could be so much more if only my.com would stop screwing it up. I don't know. Can I, can, can I jump into stuff at a higher level or lower level? Not even now. Uh, oh, it goes on. Sorry. I hate to be Mr. Negativity, but a bomb to Skyforge's Grand Prix event. Should be called Grand Give Me Your Crystals event. <laughs> you can only do the event race every eight, eight hours unless you use cash to speed it up. Oh, there it is. Add to it that they put what should be a basic game feature, changing builds without having to reset the character as a mid-tier prize to it, and I can only find it to be a bad cash grab. Wow. See, I, that's why I asked this question. Let the venom out. Let it out. This, uh, just spill it onto that YouTube page and then be done with it. Have a good day on the internet from there on out. Kevin Sharp, and a wide variety of answers here, too. Kevin Sharp, question of the week. This pains me to say, but I think my vote goes to Star Wars The Old Republic. I'm a huge Star Wars nerd and an MMORPG veteran of many years, from EQ to EQ2 and beyond. And I enjoy them all for their various reasons, but I always wanted an MMORPG set in the galaxy far, far away that was just a compelling gamer experience. I had huge hopes for Star Wars Galaxies and loved the early sandbox build and feel, but subsequent patches and mishandles until shutdown were pretty painful. Enter Bioware. Surely the kings of compelling storytelling, i.e. Mass Effect, could give us a great experience, and they did. But things got a bit askew, and after the free-to-play model hit, I was happy to not pay for mediocre gaming. But the restrictions are way too severe on free-to-play, to the point I can't even enjoy my time in it, because even if I group up for a Flashpoint, I can't wear any of my best-in-slot gear. Oh, unless I pay to unlock it. Per character. Not account. Character. <laughs> Same goes for crafting. I can't even make an entire recipe being locked out of one of the three needed skills unless I buy, to, uh, buy it to unlock. Per character. Scrap it. EA makes tons of money elsewhere. Someone else can attempt to give us a great, non-pay-to-win, Star Wars free-to-play MMORPG, I hope. But this one needs re-examined and may be relaunched in a different format. And unfortunately, that is unlikely to happen for only many, I, many, many years. The only hope I could hold out is that someone might do something based on the new movies. I could maybe. Happen. I don't think Disney would let that happen. I don't. Well, think... the thing is, those movies will be done in like five years, so that by then, you know, maybe yeah, they'll yeah, have true. their contract up. So, go ahead, sir. All right, Aaron, Queen of Pole, says I will shut down Eve Online. Yep, still salty as fuck about CCP canceling World of Darkness. Aaron, I'm with you. <sighs> I just, I just can't get upset at companies shutting games down, like, ever. No. You Even need to, you need, Jason, you down, need to be upset about this. No, no. Even Jason, shuts down, be trouble. upset. <sighs> Hold me. Not even, even MMOs that never happened. See, those are the best MMOs, the ones that you never got to play because they're still perfect. <laughs> the instant you get into play, then you're going to bitch about everything. Blah, I don't care 11 says World of Warcraft, not because I dislike it at all, but because it would leave such a huge hole and it would be really exciting to see how that hole gets filled. What I said. Go to all my games. Uh, yeah, that's actually, it's not, a bad, not a bad thought. What I'd love to see is a competent studio make an MMO that is really built for today's technology. While shutting down would surely entice many great devs to give it a go. I don't think he's he or she's necessarily wrong there. Would right, be K quick. <laughs> K.O. says if I could shut down a free-to-play game, it would be Heroes of the Storm. It's only been pushed with Blizzard's money and doesn't really deserve the spot it has in that genre. Brutal. Well, I mean, if you get Brutal. pushed with money and then actually bring people in... Tim cool. Taylor says, question of the week, I would shut down Arcage. The core game is the most fun I've had in an MMORPG since Burning Crusade. 
I would shut it down on hopes that literally any other publisher would pick up the title and obtain a soul-crushing grip on my soul. Well, they would still be beholden to XL Games and what they wanted to do, so... Good luck. All right, Neil Phantom says, question of the week, I was shut down pretty much 90%, if not more, of the mobile games. Why, you ask? Let's just say that Tiny Mighty is pretty much a carbon copy of those. And, needs to be, and to be perfectly honest, most have even worse cash up shenanigans. Just saying. Yep. Chris Baker says, I am Mr. Jason Winter's number one fan. Uh, wait, thanks, but does it mean you want to shut me down? Question of the week, a free-to-play MMO I can shut down? I would say Swordsman Online. Honestly, does anyone ever even hear anything about this game anymore? I played it for a short while to escape my age of wushu addiction, and boy do I regret it. The game's a grindy pay-to-win nightmare. If the game makes it past 2016, I'd be thoroughly impressed. Swordsman <laughs> Online is one of those games that when I get the presser in the email box, I'm sitting there typing up some article, and I'll hear it chime, and I'll look, and I'll see the subject line is about some update for Swordsman Online. I just go, oh. <laughs> you should go back and read my review of it that I gave. Oh, uh, you should go before you came back. You go, go read up. my articles on updates. They're like the most I don't care <laughs> articles and, ever. And here's the other little interesting fact: it is not Swordsman Online. The title of the game is it's Swordsman. Swordsman. Period. It's like. Yep. All right. Question of the week this week: No more Venom. Let us know what you think about Wildstar's free-to-play model. Now that you've seen it explained, now that you've seen it in action, what do you think of the payment model? Put it in the comments below. Put your dub bombs, your A bombs, your thoughts on the free-to-play world, or your questions for our hosts in there as well. As you see, I grab as many of them as I can. Until next week, Jason, where can the world find you? Uh, in Texas where I'm sweating because it's still too damn hot out. No. Uh, but otherwise, if you don't have the money to fly to Texas, find me on Twitter at WinterInformal, streaming twitch.tv slash Jason Winter. Is, is your girl still doing the Etsy stuff? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Etsy, uh, Etsy.com slash Dream Alley. There you go. There you go. See, I saved you from you getting in trouble. I there saved you, you from getting in trouble with the ladies. I'm Mike Byrne, a.k.a. Magic Man. You can follow me on Twitter at MagicMan1. That's M-A-G-I-C-K-M-A-N-N-1, -N where I will tweet at your face occasionally. Uh, come on over to MMOBomb.com. Check out all the other great articles, videos, giveaways, streams, first looks, and everything we've got there for you in the world of free-to-play gaming. Until next week, gang, stay safe, and we'll see you on the servers.